Welcome back to another video. My name is Yadi, and if you are new, please consider subscribing. In today's video, we are going to be going over disorders and diseases of the skin. This topic, it is so important in our industry, and it is very, very critical that we understand diseases and disorders of the skin in order for us to do a proper skin analysis. If you find the information helpful, don't forget to share, like, and again, consider subscribing. Now let's get started. As a professional, having an understanding of disorders and diseases of the skin is important to help recognize potentially contagious skin disorders and stop the spread of infection. In this video, I will show you examples of primary and secondary lesions among other skin concerns you might encounter. Dermatologists, physicians, and nurse practitioners are qualified to diagnose skin problems. Never work on skin conditions you do not recognize. When in doubt, stop the service. A quick disclaimer, I do not own the rights to the images shown in this video. They are used for educational purpose only. Lesions are structural changes in the tissue caused by damage or injury. Any mark, wound, or abnormality is described as a lesion. The three types of lesions are primary, secondary, and tertiary. Some references call tertiary or third type of lesion as vascular lesions. Vascular lesions involve the blood and circulatory system. Primary lesions are lesions in the initial stages of development or change. Primary lesions are categorized by flat, non-palpable changes in the skin color or by elevation formed by fluid. Bulla. A bulla is a large blister containing a watery fluid. A cyst or tubercle is a closed, abnormally developed sac that contains pus, semi-fluid or morbid matter above or below the skin. A cyst can be drained of fluid and a turbicle cannot, requires medical referral. Macule, flat spot or discoloration on the skin. An example would be a freckle or age spot. Nodule, a solid bump larger than one centimeter that can be easily felt. Papule, a small elevation on the skin that contains no fluid but may develop pus. An example would be acne, warts, or an elevated nevi. Pustules, raised, inflamed, papule with a white or yellow center containing pus in the top of the lesion. An example would be acne and pedigo and folliculitis. Tumor, an abnormal mass varying in size, shape, and color. Any type of abnormal mass, not always cancer, requires medical referral. Vesicle, small blister or sac containing clear fluid lying within just beneath the epidermis. Example, poison ivy, poison oak. Wheel, an itchy swollen lesion that can be caused by a blow, scratch, bite of an insect, or urticaria, skin allergies. Example, hives, mosquito bites. Secondary lesions are categorized by piles of material on the skin surface, such as crust or a scab, or by depression in the skin surface, such as an ulcer. These may require medical referral. Crust. Dead skin cells that form over a wound or blemish while healing. Accumulation of sebum and pus, sometimes mixed with epidermal cells. Example, scab, sore. Next, we have excoriation. Skin sore or abrasion produced by scratching or scraping. 
Example, nail cuticle damage from nail biting. Fissure, crack in the skin that penetrates the dermis. Example, severely cracked or chapped hands, lips, or feet. Keloid, a thick scar resulting from excessive growth of fibrous tissue. Keloid will form along any type of scar for people that are more susceptible to them, common in the ear area. Scale, thin, dry, or oily plate of epidermal flakes. Example, excessive dandruff, psoriasis. Scar or cicatrix, slightly raised or depressed area of the skin that forms as a result of the healing process related to an injury or lesion. Ulcer, open lesion on the skin or mucous membrane of the body, loss of skin death, and possibly weeping of fluid or pus, requires medical referral, especially for clients with underlying medical conditions such as diabetes. A normal mole is a small brownish spot on the skin ranging in color from pale tan to brown or bluish black. This is not a type of skin cancer and as you guys can see there's a few examples. Types of skin cancer. First one, basal cell carcinoma, the most common and least severe type of skin cancer which often appears as light pearly nodules. Characteristics include sores, reddish patches, or a smooth growth with an elevated border. Squamous cell carcinoma. More serious than basal cell carcinoma, it is characterized by scaly, red, or pink papules or nodules. Also appear as open sores or crusty areas can grow and spread in the body. Malignant melanoma, the most serious form of skin cancer as it can spread quickly. Black or dark patches on the skin are usually uneven and textured, jagged or raised. Melanomas may have surface crust or bleed. Acne, an inflammatory skin disorder of the sebaceous glands. It is characterized by excessive sebum production. This excess oil and dead skin cells can plug pores, creating comedones, papules, and pustules, and cyst. Sebum can irritate the follicles and cause inflammation. As bacteria and inflammation grow, pressure is exerted on the follicle walls. If the wall ruptures, it becomes infected and debris spills out into the dermis. Redness and inflammation happens when that foreign debris created from the dead white blood cells is detected in the skin and the white blood cells move in to fight the infection. Open comedone is a black head open at the surface and exposed to air. A closed comedone are white heads formed when the opening of the follicles are blocked with debris and white cells. Sebaceous filaments. Similar to an open comedone, they are mainly small, solidified impactions of oil without the cell matter. These filaments also block the follicle and can cause an acne breakout. They are often found on the nose. In the picture, you can see the difference between the two. Milia, a small epidermal cyst that appear as white firm papules. Milia are whitish pearl-like masses of sebum and dead cells under the skin with no visible opening. Sebaceous hyperplasia, a benign lesion frequently seen in oilier areas of the face, they are often white, yellow, or flesh-colored. Sebaceous hyperplasia is described as the donut shaped with an indentation in the center. Seborrhea is a severe oiliness of the skin.
an abnormal secretion from the sebaceous glands. When it is in the scalp, it is called dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis, but it can happen around the eyebrows, behind the ears, and around the nose or other areas of the face. It is not acne, although the inflammation in the skin from seborrhea can be misidentified as acne. Acne is graded on a scale from 1 to 4. Grade 1 acne is mild and usually treated by skincare professionals and over-the-counter skincare lines, whereas grade 4 acne has consistent breakouts and deep cysts that may require medical assistance. Grade 1 usually has minor breakouts, mostly open comedones, some closed comedones, and a few papules. Grade 2 has many closed comedones, more open comedones, and occasionally papules and pustules. Grade 3, usually red and inflamed, many comedones, papules, and pustules are usually present. Grade 4, cystic acne, cyst with comedones, papules, pustules, and inflammation. Scar formation from tissue damage is common. Common vascular conditions and disorders. These type of vascular lesions may be considered tertiary lesions. We have rosacea is an inflammatory and vascular disorder with multiple causes that are not completely understood. Visible vessels and skin sensitivity are symptoms. Symptoms can progress to pustular-like breakouts that can be confused with acne, spicy foods, alcohol, caffeine, extreme temperatures, heat, sun, and stress can aggravate rosacea symptoms. Telangiectasia, visible capillaries anywhere between 0.5 to 1 millimeter in diameter that are commonly found on the face, particularly around the nose, cheeks, and chin. They can appear due to injury, heredity, rosacea, hormonal changes, or exposure to extreme cold or heat. Telangiectasia is a cosmetic irregularity and it is not a medical condition. Pigmentation disorders. Abnormal pigmentation is referred to as dyschromia, can be caused by various internal and external factors. Hyperpigmentation, overproduction of pigment, and hypopigmentation is lack of pigment and are the two types of pigmentation disorders. Sun exposure is the biggest external cause of pigmentation disorders and can make existing pigmentation disorders worse. Melasma is a type of hormonal pigmentation disorder that first appears during pregnancy or with the use of birth control pills. Melasma has an identifiable pattern of solid, fairly symmetrical hyperpigmentation often on the forehead, cheeks, upper lip, and chin. Lentigo is a flat pigmented area similar to a freckle, small yellow-brown spot. Lentigens are multiple pigmented lesions, also known as age spots. They're often associated with aging skin. Nevas, also known as a birthmark, is the malformation of the skin from abnormal pigmentation or dilated capillaries that is present at birth or appears after birth. A port wine stain is a vascular type of nevus. Below is an example of a pigmented nevus and a port wine stain. Poikiloderma of Savat is a skin condition caused by actinic bronzing, chronic sun exposure to the sides of the face and neck. Post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, also known as PIH, is darkened pigmentation due to an injury to the skin or the residual healing after an acne lesion has healed. It is often deep red, purple, or brown in appearance, very common in Fitzpatrick's scale 4 through 6. 
post-inflammatory erythema, also known as PIE, pink or red in color, and it is very common in Fitzpatrick 1 through 3. Hypopigmentation. Leukoderma is a loss of pigmentation leading to light abnormal patches of depigmented skin. It is a congenital disorder due to the immunological and post-inflammatory causes. Vitiligo and albinism are leukodermas. Albinism is a rare genetic condition characterized by a lack of melanin pigment in the body, including the skin, hair, and eyes. The person is at risk of skin cancer. It's sensitive to light and ages early without the normal melanin protection. Vitiligo is a pigmentation disease characterized by white irregular patches of the skin that are totally lacking pigment. The condition can worsen with time and sunlight. The disease can occur at any age and it is believed to be an autoimmune disorder causing absence of melanocytes in our body, which is the pigment cell. Tinea versicolor, also called pityriasis versicolor, is a fungal condition that inhibits melanin production. It is not contagious because it is caused by yeast, a normal part of the human skin. It is characterized by white, brown, or salmon color flaky patches. Sun exposure can stimulate the growth of the fungus. Antifungal creams, lotions, shampoos can help treat it. But even after successful treatment, skin color may remain uneven for several weeks or months. Tinea versicolor often happens in warm, humid weather. Describe the different types of dermatitis. Dermatitis is a generalized term to refer to an inflammatory condition of the skin. Various forms include lesions such as eczema, vesicles, or papules. Contact dermatitis can be used from ingredients in cosmetics and chemical solutions Allergic contact dermatitis is caused by exposure to and direct skin contact with an allergen. Contact dermatitis can be red, itchy skin, can be caused by an allergic reaction or contact with an irritant such as makeup, skincare, products, detergent, dyes, to name a few. Atopic dermatitis is a chronic relapsing form of dermatitis irritants and allergens triggering reactions that include dry cracked skin. The retinous itching and dehydration of the dermatitis makes the condition worse. Eczema is an inflammatory, painful itching disease of the skin. It is acute or chronic in nature and has dry or moist lesions. Perioral dermatitis is an acne-like condition around the mouth, consisting mainly of small clusters of papules. It may be caused by products used on the face. This is not contagious. Hypertrophy is defined as an abnormal growth. Many are benign or harmless. However, some growths are pre-malignant or malignant and can be dangerous or cancerous. The term hypertrophic is used to describe thickening of a tissue. Hyperkeratosis is thickening of the skin caused by a mass of keratinocytes. Keratoma, a thickened patch of epidermis. A callus caused by pressure or friction is a keratoma. If the thickening also grows inward, it becomes a corn. Keratosis pilaris, redness and bumpiness in the cheeks, upper arms, or thighs, caused by blocked follicles. It has the appearance of what they call chicken skin or strawberry legs. 
psoriasis, an itchy skin disease characterized by red patches covered with white silver scales caused by an overproliferation of skin cells that replicate too fast. Psoriasis is usually found in patches on the scalp, elbows, knees, legs, chest, and lower back. Skin tag. They are small outgrowths or extensions of the skin that look like flaps. They're benign and are common under the arm or on the neck or breast area caused by friction. Contagious skin and nail diseases. The term contagious disease is used interchangeably with the term infectious or communicable disease. Do not perform services on anyone with a contagious disease because it can spread and infect others. Refer them to a medical professional. Conjunctivitis, also known as pink eye, inflammation of the mucous membrane, the conjunctiva around the eye due to chemical, bacterial, viral causes, and it is very contagious. Herpes simplex virus 1, fever blisters or cold sores, recurring viral infection, a vesicle or group of vesicles on a red swollen base. The blisters usually appear on the lips or nostrils. Herpes simplex virus 1 causes cold sores and lesions around the mouth and it is a contagious disease. Herpes simplex virus 2. Genital herpes. Never work on clients with active herpes lesions. The virus can spread to other areas on the person that is infected or to other people. Herpes zoster, also known as shingles, a painful skin condition due to the reactivation of the chickenpox virus. Shingles is a viral infection of the sensory nerves characterized by groups of red blisters that form a rash that occurs in a ring or line. The rash is typically confined to one side of the body. In pedigo, a bacterial infection of the skin that often occurs in children, characterized by clusters of small blisters or crusty lesions filled with bacteria. It is extremely contagious. Onychomycosis, a fungal infection that produces symptoms of thick, brittle, discolored nails. Tinea, a fungal infection. Tinea pedis is athlete's foot. It is a fungal infection that can be treated with antifungal topical powders, sprays, or creams. Tinea corporis, also known as ringworms, caused by fungus. It is not a worm. It looks like a skin irritation that spreads into a circular infection that is red and scaly. It can be dry or moist. It can be spread by direct contact as well as indirect contact with items that have touched the skin of the infected person. A verruca, also known as a wart, it is a hypertrophy of the papillae and epidermis caused by a virus. They are not cancerous, but they are contagious. A verruca are typically flesh-colored, but can be brown or black. They can appear singly or in clusters. Folliculitis, hair that grows under the skin instead of growing up and out of the follicle, causing a bacterial infection. Soto folliculitis is also known as razor bumps, resembles folliculitis but without the pus and infection. And that is it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you found the information helpful, don't forget to share like and please consider subscribing let me know in the comments down below what do you think do you feel like this information was helpful to you like always don't forget to keep going keep growing and i'll see you guys on the next one bye guys